Hey friends, I'm Otis Gibbs, and this is my buddy Kenny Vaughn. He's going to share some stories about Jeff Beck. Jeff Beck. Oh, yeah, man. I think that um, he changed the face of popular music. I watched Shindig TV. I was watching the night they played, the Yardbirds played I'm a Man. And um, they closed out the show with the Yardbirds doing I'm a Man Live. And, you know, there's this guy, you know, there's these four beat combo dudes and then Jeff Beck. You know, and he looks different from them. Even though he's wearing the same clothes, he has a whole different vibe. And he's playing, you know, they, they, the first song they did was uh, Your Heart Full of Soul. And he plays that groovy guitar solo, you know, with, and then the sitar line, you know. And it's just like, this guy is from another planet. I didn't even know his name then. This is different. And then they did I'm a Man at the end, and they're rolling the credits at the end when they go into the rave up thing, and he does the Bo Diddley thing where he... And he starts making noise, you know? He's not even playing notes. He's he's making that percussive Bo Diddley thing, and uh, which Bo did on... Um, same thing he did on mumbling guitar, Bo Diddley's mumbling guitar. So he's doing that, and then he pulls out a slide, and he start, and he grabs his guitar and holds it, horizontally off the strap and he starts he looks at the camera and he's raking the slide up and down the strings you know and then it goes off they, they you know well actually they got back into the song and then the the song ends before i mean the the show ended before they finished the song i think or you know almost got to the end but i'm just like i'm sitting there i'm you know 11 or 12 years old i don't even have a guitar yet you know but i'm thinking this happened. What am I seeing? This little black and white TV show went from being just dull and black and white into living color. And my, it was like the whole, it was just like my mind was blown by that guy right there. And nobody played those kind of sounds before he did in the white world. You know, I'm certainly blues, say, a, you know, buddy guy was... No, nah, nah, he wasn't even doing that. He wasn't really playing with distortion at that time. But some people were on those old blues records. They'd overdrive the amp, you know, and, you know, it's kind of cool sounding. But nobody did it like he did, you know, with that attitude, that, you know, just like devilish sort of grin, you know, and that just like he was different from everybody else, you know. And then, you know, I bought the Yardbirds records and stuff like Shapes of Things and... uh uh, ten, happenings 10 years time ago. It's just like, what is going on? Especially happening t 10 years time ago where it's Jeff playing the the crazy stuff and Jimmy is is on that recording too. Jimmy Page, is that's that's one of the only recordings that they made together. Jeff was tired of being in the Arbors and he just split and and J Jimmy took over the guitar slot and, their, and the rhythm guitar player took over the bass slot because the bass player quit. But... You know, there, he was doing something that nobody else had done. You know, Paul McCartney kind of was the guy that made the most out of it when he did the solo on Tax Man. That's a clearly Jeff Beck inspired solo. And that's yeah. Paul playing it? Yes. And, you know, he's playing a, his Esquire through a, a, a fuzz tone of some sort, you know, or, a, you know, some kind of distortion device. It's either the distortion on the box amp or probably most likely a. I don't know what, what they, I'm not sure what he used, but I know it was, you know, some kind of distortion going on there. But uh, that was clearly a nod to Jeff. Paul also kind of uh, copped his groove on um, the, the solo on Day Tripper, that little section in the middle. That's Paul overdubbed that solo. That's him on that. And that's kind of Jeff Beckish too. And um when Jimi Hendrix went to London, he wanted to meet two people, Eric Clapton and Jeff Beck. And the first thing he asked Jeff was, Jeff was how do you get those feedback sounds when you recorded this song, you know? And so, you know, come on, man. He changed the face of popular music with that. Nobody had done that yet in popular music. They'd done it in blues, but not as forward thinking and in jet age sort of space age kind of, not with that attitude, you know? Oh, I like everything he ever did. I'm a big fan of all this stuff. Uh, I wasn't bothered when he um, stepped away from being a rock and roll guitar player to being a fusion guitar player and all that stuff, because I liked his take on it. 
I thought he, I, I, I wasn't bothered by anything that he did. A lot of my friends were like, oh, you know, I don't like that fusion stuff he's doing. But I saw him play several times doing that stuff, and I was blown away, you know. I was like, wow, this guy's amazing. I remember one time I saw him at Bonnaroo. It's probably about 12 years ago, roughly, 10, 12, more like 12. I'm not sure what it was, but he played down there, and uh, I was down there playing and I was friends with the guy who ran the whole thing. And so he uh, hooked me up with a golf cart and I would have my two teenagers and they wanted to, they wanted to go see Jay-Z, who was the headliner. And so I, well, we made a day, but I said, only if we can go in the after, you know, after I'm done, I'm going to, we're going to go over and watch Jeff Beck. And they were like, who's Jeff Beck? You know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and uh, the funny thing about that gig was, oh, he was really great. He was jumping all over the place and smiling, you know, and, they're like having a good time, which wasn't always the case. Sometimes he didn't have a good time. He's kind of um, flighty. Uh, but the other funny thing that happened at that gig was Stevie Wonder was opening for Jay-Z. That was the big thing, at, you know, late, late at night, at the big night, you know, Saturday night at Bonnaroo. And uh, my daughter, my oldest daughter was like, "Who? who's this Stevie Wonder guy, you know? And, and I said, well, you'll see. You know, we were there watching it. Every song, she goes, I know this song. <laughs> this, I, he's like, that's, oh, yeah, okay. You know, <laughs> she figured it out quick, who Steve Wonder was. He was fantastic, man. Uh, but back to Jeff. Uh, I was in London playing with Lucinda Williams, that's right. And we were hanging out for a couple of days in London. We had a hotel and, you know, park. we were camped out there. My friend Kim Ritchie was, um, who I used to play with, uh, she was making a record with Hugh Padgham, who is a famous producer, and uh, at the studio. And she said, come on over, man, you know, come over and visit. So, you know, I, it was about, I, I had lunch and then I went over there to see her, hang out in the afternoon, you know, just spend some time in the control room because they weren't, tracking they were just um, I think they were mixing at that time and so I got to watch Hugh Padgham mix you know and and I'd been there for quite a while sitting on the couch and that guy uh, Dominic Miller who plays guitar for Sting he showed up because he'd played on the record and um, he was hanging out and you know we were talking about stuff you know and and I had to go to the bathroom. I said, hey, uh, where's, the, where's the bathroom in this joint? And, and oh, they said, oh, go down the hall. And Dominic says, come on with me, man. I'll show you. I work here a lot. And so we walked down this hallway, and we were about ready to get to the kitchen where the bathroom was, and we heard this sound coming out from this Studio A. You know, we were like, it was somebody plugged into an amp, tuning up their guitar and playing little licks while they were tuning the guitar. <laughs> You know, and it was like we just stopped and froze, and, and we were face to face with our ears to the to the door, you know, listening. And he says, "That's the governor, mate." <laughs> and I said, "Yeah, that's got to be the governor because no one else sounds like that when they're tuning up their guitar." You know, that was just like easily identifiable, you know. And so we went on to the kitchen, and we came back and. We were sitting there, and uh, this uh, studio assistant guy that works at the studio came in and said, does anybody need anything? And uh, I said, no, no. I said, is that Jeff Beck in Studio A? And the guy said, yeah. Would you like to meet him? And my mind just, like, went to this, you know, it was like a car wreck in my mind, you know. I was like, and I finally just said, no. <laughs> Because, <laughs> you know, what are you going to say to Jeff Beck that he hasn't heard from every other guitar player on the planet? Yeah. What am I going to say to him? He's working. You know, he's like, you don't bother somebody while they're at work, you know. And I was like, no, I'm not going to. Yeah, I just didn't want to open that box, you know. And I was like, no, thanks. You, you know. And when I said that, Hugh was at the control at, at the board, you know, with his back to me. And he, without even turning around, he said, that's a wise decision, lad. <laughs> and I thought, all right, <laughs> I've done the right thing. 